The Sapa Jade Hill Resort is a beautiful setting, but too many aspects of my stay were just mediocre for me to recommend it. Find out why, coming up. Located in the far northwest of the country, Sapa is an idyllic town and one of the gateways to the northern highlands of Vietnam. But before we dive deeper into this resort, a brief intro to the region. Although the development of one has been announced, Sapa does not currently have its own airport. So your journey is going to start off in Hanoi. From there, you can take a comfortable sleeper bus or sprint a ride along the Red River in about five hours. Or you can take the overnight train which takes 10 hours to Lao Cai Station, an hour's drive from Sapa. And you get to listen to this all night long. I'll leave that choice to you. Sapa Jade Hill is just on the outskirts of town, around a 10 minute taxi ride costing two, three or four dollars. In the distance, you can see what I'll refer to as the modern cabins. These are all located close to the main reception area, which feels like the center of the resort. You'll see why soon, but this resort feels a bit disjointed for two reasons. The area where I stayed, which I chose, has a completely different cabin concept around a five minute buggy ride from this area. It feels as if there were two separate properties operating under one brand. Besides the distance between the two and different design though, I take no issue with it. The reception area has a feel of a mountain ski lodge, with many Highland ethnic minority design nods throughout. Overall, it's warm and inviting and a good first impression. In the rear, there's an open patio which serves as a patisserie on warmer days. One note about my stay. This was filmed in April of 2021, at a time when COVID was frankly of little concern in Vietnam. You'll notice almost no staff wearing masks, as this was common in the time in the north of the country. Things now are surely different. Sapa's elevation is around 6,000 feet or 2,000 meters and enjoys a temperate climate all year round with temperatures rarely going above 75 Fahrenheit 24 Celsius or below 45 Fahrenheit or 7 Celsius. There are, however, two distinct times to visit. March and April are your best chances for a balance of drier and sunnier weather, whereas August and September will show you a much lusher landscape with near daily rain as a trade-off. To the side of the reception area is the resort's indoor swimming pool. The view was beautiful, but I'm surprised they didn't make it larger given how popular indoor pools are in Sapa. Next to it is what some might refer to as a fitness center. Now, we are heading to my cabin during this stay, a panorama view bungalow. After around a five minute drive from the other side of the resort, we enter the steep and winding hills which are a landmark of the property. Each cabin here houses two units.
Mornings and evenings were filled with mist and fog generally, with the afternoons letting us best see what's around as well as the beautiful Kept Resort grounds. There's a small portico attached to the outside of the bungalow to allow you to take off your muddy shoes and the two units can be connected through this area. Walking inside, we can instantly see the charm and why I picked this particular category as opposed to some of the more modern cabins. There are, in my opinion though, a few design flaws. Starting off with the lack of light and cross ventilation in the room. As is common in Sapa, the rooms don't have air conditioning and that's fine. but. There's only openable windows, the sliding door actually, on one side of the room. The other three walls won't help you get a breeze going unless you keep the front door open. Universal outlets are conveniently located and in good supply, and the room has a mini bar stocked with just the basics. In the closet, you could find some complimentary local snacks. The only coffee available though was instant, but that's to be expected here. The closet was a decent size and came with precisely one bottle of water. I called on three separate occasions to request more water, just one more bottle, but it never came. Eventually, I just went for the overpriced Tasani in the cooler. The bathroom was cozy and spotlessly clean, with basic amenities and a wooden soaking tub in front of a beautiful picture window. The view is phenomenal, but not that easy to see, which I'll get to in a moment. The roof rafters hang very low, which doesn't let a lot of natural light into the room. Also, these rooms were definitely not designed with taller people in mind. I'm 6 foot or around 181 centimeters, and this is my direct line of view when standing on the balcony. And again when sitting. At least though, the soaking tub and heat lamps made up for that. The late afternoon sun was beginning to set as dinner time arrived. The primary restaurant on property is located just above the reception area and was a disappointment. The tables were absolutely packed into the space and they were out of my first and second choices for both my appetizer and my main course. And the main course, which was supposed to be black pepper beef, was definitely not black pepper beef. The next morning, the haze hung low in the valley as we made our way to breakfast, which was included. 
There was nothing to fault per se about the breakfast service, but definitely nothing to impress either. And the iced coffee cups were absolutely tiny. Okay, so let's get into the flip-flop score. The room design was cozy, but flawed for a few reasons. 6 out of 10. Materials were solid though, and the condition was pretty good. 8 out of 10. While intentions were good, basic service was lacking except for a few standouts. 7 out of 10. Overall, I found the layout and design of the common areas, as well as the landscaping, to be above average for this category of hotel, with an 8 and a 9 out of 10 respectively. There was nothing to fault regarding the cleanliness though, a solid 10. The venues were a bit generic, and the main restaurant afforded very little space. Give it a 7. Food quality was average at best, at a 6. Finally, we have the view. If you were the perfect height, it was fantastic. 9 out of 10. Overall, a 76 out of 100. My lowest score for any property in Sapa. I recommend staying elsewhere to be honest, there's just better value out there. Thanks for watching, and see you in a few days with another review.